It's too hot. <laughs> hey, my little peacherinos, and welcome back to a new video. You guys have been asking for a long time for me to do another one of my Sims tea videos. This is where I basically have stuff that goes on in the background that I don't tell you guys about, rumors that you guys have asked about that I can confirm or deny, and just general tea that you guys may not know that I can clear up in this video. Now, the last one I did was a little while ago, so what I've done is gone back to that one, looked at everything we've done since then, and basically got a whole load more tea for you guys. Tea of every Every single flavor there's gonna be something for everyone in this video i even have my own tea to drink while we're doing this video mine is an upbeat uh, herbal tea with actual beets in it and look at this beautiful flavor here is my tea for this video i invite you guys to get yours now so you can drink it while you watch but i've basically been creating this list that i can't show you guys <laughs> we're gonna go through in today's video if there's stuff i've missed i'll try and remember it as we go along but if not we can just do another tea video although now i have less series the tea is getting rarer but we'll see what we can do so the first bit of tea on our list is Zoe Rose Bloom's Parenthood. Now, obviously, Zoe lives with her two dads, Valentin and Chase Collins. They live in uh, the house that James and Selma kind of built together. And they obviously are there co-parenting, co raising their daughter, Zoe Rose Bloom. But obviously, you can't usually use the DNA of two bros just hanging out in a hot tub. Not actually hanging out in their own house with a daughter, but in separate bedrooms because they ain't together. But usually, you cannot add those two things together to make a child. However, you guys have been speculating hard who the surrogate mum could have been. I've seen people suggest Yes, Nevaeh, which was uh, Chase's ex-girlfriend. Robin Smith, who was obviously with Nathan, but then her and Chase kind of had a bit of a thing. You also have even seen on the wiki people thinking that maybe it was Ruben, but I think Robin Smith was probably the one that you guys thought was the most likely candidate for a Zoe Rose surrogate mom. However, I can't actually reveal the truth about where a heritage came from in today's tea video. Let's all take a sip. too hot. <laughs> so there was a brief moment shown, I think it was in one of the Stranger Things uh, storylines, which would have given you guys a little bit of a hint for this. Cody got a call from Chase and took it while the other guys were talking. I was chit-chatting with him for a while. That was kind of the first hint. I dropped a few other hints during the series, kind of indicating where the baby could have come from. And also, I've talked about this as well in the Discord. So the seeds were all planted and I know that some of you guys, this isn't tea, I know that you guys know this. But if you go on uh, Zoe's kind of cast menu, you can see that both of her dads are listed as the father and I can tell you that I actually didn't do any household member <laughs> I actually didn't edit any of this stuff at all because actually genetically both Valentine and Chase are 100% given a 50% 100% given 50% of their DNA to Zoe. I actually had Cody go in there and use his scientific brain, his intense scientist background. Usually you obviously wouldn't be able to do this in the real world, but one, this is Sims, and two, obviously we know that Cody has had a lot of experience with the occult, so if anyone would have learned the way to do this, it would have been him. Cody actually used his science science to help blend their DNA to create Zoe Rose because they knew they wanted a child together. A child that would actually have both of their DNA and hey, if they've got a friend that could help them out with that, why would you not do that? So I think you can probably see this in her face as well a lot because I tried to give her something of everyone. You can very much see that she got Val's eyes but then I think she got a lot more of like Chase's, Chase's hair for one, but his skin tone, uh, I think both of them are freckles potentially, but also the eye colour. Oh wow, something's going wrong in her life right now. The actual more brown Brownie Ambery eye color comes from Chase's mom, uh, Charlie Rose, as well. So, a little bit of everyone in there. And the wiki can now be edited, the secret can be revealed, and the truth is out there. The rumors can be laid to rest. Zoe Rose is actually 100% the child of uh, Valentine and Chase. I think our first boy, boy, baby in the whole of the series. It would be nice if you could do that in real life. Also, her name, Zoe Rose. Rose, obviously, as kind of a little bit of a homage to Charlie Rose. And the Zoe part is actually a homage to uh, Val's creator who is Zoe and Melissa. So there you go. Actually a lot of mixed parenthood going on with that one. So our next little bit of tea is Summer's pregnancy or non-pregnancy storyline. <laughs> Of course, we try 
travel back to the beautiful Del Sol Valley into the hills to Seji and Summer's beautiful home. And my decision to go down the route where Summer kind of struggled with not wanting to have a baby and kind of the, the backlash that she was worried about getting for that because obviously she was an actress. She didn't want it to halt her career, but there's kind of this negativity scene on women. But like, it's seen as a selfish decision when it 100% shouldn't be. Now, a lot of people also kind of went down the route of assuming that I'd gone for a non-pregnancy line with Summer because I didn't like her and I was kind of punishing her character. In actual fact, the opposite was true. I went down this storyline because I liked Summer. I wanted to kind of play out one of my own fears and insecurities using her character. So I talk about this a little bit in videos, but I actually have something called tocophobia, which means I am just almost stupidly scared of ever being pregnant to the point where it's kind of nonsense. But to me, it doesn't feel that way. To me, it's something I think about a lot. I'm at the point where I get like, I feel uncomfortable and feel like there's something even like growing in me when I see like pregnant people and it makes me like, I don't know, I just get, I, I get really uncomfortable about it. I have nightmares about it quite a lot. It's just this thing that I've got that is a pretty big part of my life. Even more so when you consider my age, like I'm 30 years old, it's the kind of time you start to think about this kind of thing a lot. And I get a lot of pressure online with people saying like, oh, you're getting married when you're having babies. Every time I think that I'm, I'm gonna and like tell you guys some news, everyone's like, oh my God, she's finally pregnant. So there's a lot of pressure on me. And I kind of felt like Summer was probably a character that was feeling that pressure in a big way as well, both in the sim world, but also from you guys a little bit too. And the weird thing about Sims is like, sim women never have this fear of pregnancy. They're just like super happy the whole time. There doesn't really seem to be like the anxiety and stress that I was feeling about it projected in game. So I wanted to have a go at doing that myself and trying that with little Summer. And I think kind of in one way the interesting thing was that a lot of people did get quite upset and angry that Summer wasn't gonna have children. Even though like she seemed like she'd be a great mom, she loved her family, like she liked pl interacting with other people's children. Like that doesn't mean that you want your own, like I feel that way too. The kind of, the worries that I had about the way that people would react, I really saw people do that in Summer's storyline and get quite angry at her and angry at me, but I had to see it through because I did it like for, my, for myself in a way and for my own own like stresses and worries. So yeah, that is the reason that I did the storyline I did with Summer. It had a very world, real world reflection on myself and it was kind of therapeutic for myself. It's still something I worry about. It's still something I don't know if it's gonna be part of my future or not, but it was definitely interesting to play out on a sim and see what people's reactions would be to it. I know she would have great, made great babies. She has amazing DNA, but that isn't enough reason to have a baby to me if that's not what you wanna do. Let's take time for her little sip of our tea. So the next few bits of tea are all from my Stranger Stories, specifically the Vampire series. So you guys kind of know how uh, Ethan and Sammy's storyline ended up, but it wasn't originally meant to go that way. Ethan was actually going to be introduced as a character that got killed off really, really quickly. remember Sammy actually went and did some therapy in between like the witches series and the start of the vampire series. He has some selfish tendencies and he kind of was obviously finding himself very unlucky in love when it came to his romantic relationship so these things were meant to help him work through that and obviously also work through his mom's death. But therapy is very much an ongoing process and nobody is obviously cured straight away and Ethan was meant to be Sammy's first test that he failed and would realize the repercussions for. So Ethan was very much meant to be just kind of like a one night stand fling kind of thing for Sammy that he'd kind of be like, oh wow, I really shouldn't have done that. Like I realized I was meant to be improving on this kind of stuff, but you know, it's not the end of the world. But then Eve would have found out and used it as a way to kind of uh, torture and punish Sammy. She would have gone ahead and killed Ethan, which would then of course make little Sammy realize that actions have consequences and he kind of made the wrong decision there. However, what kind of ended up happening instead is I I didn't expect these two to be such an adorable parent and I also didn't expect myself to end up loving Ethan's character so much. Ethan who is also a fun creation by uh, Blueberry. I mean look how pretty this boy is. And after kind of playing with them both together and seeing how they were actually kind of quite an adorable fit, I thought it would be kind of almost better and a more interesting storyline to instead of just straight up uh, killing Ethan off and making Sammy sad, maybe it would be a bigger kind of learning curve and a, bit of, a better learning moment for Sammy to to instead kind of have to do something really unselfish, help somebody else, even though he wanted to keep them around, and instead push them away
away for their own safety and let them go. Which is obviously something that Sammy had a lot of trouble with with his previous romances. So yeah, he actually ended up becoming Sammy's husband, but he was meant to be killed off within the space of one episode. He was supposed to die, but I guess both Sammy and I ended up just getting a little bit too attached. I mean, they are pretty freaking cute. You can't lie. So within the same kind of story arc, let's go into our next little tea fact, which is that Cody was also supposed to die. As you guys know, at the end of Vampires, uh, Cody rushed in to try and save Raven. He bit Eve and Eve's blood cursed him and took away his vampirism, turned him back to being immortal and basically the curse nullifies any way to try and make him a vampire again. At least any way that he's discovered so far. But what was actually originally going to happen is Cody would do the exact same thing, but instead of just being cursed and having his immortality removed from him, he would be straight up killed by Eve. I kind of wanted from the beginning for Cody to have to sacrifice himself. I knew that I wanted some big deaths from uh, vampires and Cody was meant to be the big one. It was meant to be his final series. That would be him dead and out of it and we'd kind of end things there. I kind of realized midway through that even if I wanted to kill Cody, I I did want to try and harvest a little bit of him, which would be his DNA, which would be used obviously with Arya to make a little vampire baby, which in my game and in my law in my game, vampire bear babies are super, super rare. Some people even think they're impossible. So the fact that it even was able to happen was pretty, uh, pretty much as almost an anomaly, but definitely a pretty scientific, scientifically uh, significant moment for little Cody. And it also left the door open for me because obviously I've never played with vampires up until that series before. I didn't really know the game mechanics, so I kind of wanted some kind of opportunity. If I wanted to dip my toe back into the supernatural and specifically into vampires, I had a way to do that, which was through this little cutie here. Now, my original plan was for gonna be uh, for Cody to die, so he would never get to see this part of a little vampire growing up. As you guys, uh, a lot of you guys have been very vocal about is Cody's uh, original storyline didn't really lend itself very well to fatherhood and to uh, kind of raising a baby, and I completely agree with that. That is not something I set out ever with Cody when we first started uh, his playthrough and his series. However, life doesn't always work out the way that you expect it and that's no different for my sims. Just because you don't see your life going a certain way doesn't mean life isn't gonna throw you a curveball. Sometimes we're kind of thrust into uh, roles and lives that we don't expect to find ourselves in but we just kind of have to make the best of it. And I kind of did it almost as a little bit of a gift to Cody to keep him alive but obviously with the strings attached. He would get to at least experience the beginning part of raising a child. I don't know, even if it's something he originally didn't want to do, probably he his mind would be like, huh, I'm kind of interested to see how this works and the mechanics of this. I'm kind of intrigued. And I think also the fact that it's a vampire baby would definitely, definitely get Cody very interested because this is like a scientific anomaly. He'd be super, super excited about that. So I was soft. I was like, I didn't stick to my original ruthless guns. And I was like, you know what? I'll give him this, but I will do it with strings attached. I will take away his immortality. I will make him old. Like, look how old this man looks right now. And I will kind of put a little bit of a time limit on the whole thing, which I actually think in some ways is even meaner because he gets this chance to experience uh, raising a vampire child, which I think he'd be super interested in. But he also gets this almost impossible decision. Does he dedicate the rest of his life to trying to figure out a way to lift the curse? To save himself, to return to immortality and have the life that he wanted, kind of discovering all kinds of crazy, fun, occult stuff and saving people with Arya by his side? Or does he dedicate the little time he has left to at least being a present father and raising his little vampy daughter and you know her actually getting to know him rather than him being locked away in love. And I think that is a super super difficult decision and he made the decision to at least be there and present for his daughter which is a really hard choice to make and especially for someone like Cody is very hard but I also kind of think in some ways it's the right choice. So yeah I know not everyone's gonna agree with my decision uh, of what I decided to do with Cody but I'm pretty happy with the way his storyline went. It, we could still do something with him. I don't know whether he's ever going to find a cure though, but at least he's kind of doing a, a, a probably a world's first science, science experiment, which is raising a little vampire baby, which I think is kind of a nice little uh, final hurrah for him. So away from Stranger Stories for our next little tea fact, which is less tea and I don't know, more like a nice tasty cookie because I have no idea what Alonso looks like right now. So I thought we could go ahead and cast him up in this video. I don't know 
know why he looks like is because he has taken so much longer to age up than everybody else. I wanted him to actually age up at the same time as Zoe Rose and also has Alice. Alice, who I know you guys absolutely love and you want me to try and think of something to do with her in a series. I also absolutely love her as well. She's currently a teenager and I really want to do something with her. Not only because she's really cool, but... I'm kind of in love with her, so we need to do something with her. And if I look, he's actually still, like seriously, he's still a child. So I say we just age him up all on our own. And yes, by the way, Joseph did lose his hair. Some guys do, okay? And I felt like we at least needed to represent that some guys do lose their hair. I actually think he kind of suits it. He looks pretty good still. But as if you were still a child, like seriously. How? This is Alonso, if you guys don't remember, he is Joseph and Violet's son. Violet, who unfortunately has gone, but let's see how you look as a teenager. I'm pretty excited for this, so. How? Age you up and then... Oh, interesting. I actually don't hate the shirt. But well, we've got a lot of interesting kind of... Uh, ooh, ooh. Oh, this guy's gonna be handsome. Lots of interesting skin details. Let's let's just age you back real quick so I can check what your current skin details are. And so we can try and match you up somewhat. Oh, wow. Completely different to last time. You actually look better the previous time. Does it always age up with the same face, though? Like, no matter what I do? His face looks the same to me. Oh, wow. <laughs> That is a six pack and a half. Uh, it's actually come from the skin details because if I take those off, you are so thin. Oh my boy, you can see your ribs. Oh, I need to play with you and like fan you up a little bit. Okay, so he kind of had blondie hair as well. Let's pop some skin details back on him. He's got Joseph's mono lid. So I want uh, whatever skin details we, put, details we put on him should stay with a mono lid. Like, so we can't do anything like that, but that's okay. Oh, geez, I was like, that one looks good. And then I rolled out. <laughs> I do that way too much. Oh man, and I don't know where this well. That's realistic and that's max as much. I don't know, in this case, I kind of like the realistic on him. He's so got his mum's nose, hasn't he? I don't know, I kind of like the realism. Like, I kind of think he's very handsome. Oh man. <laughs> he's so pretty. He definitely got the best of both parents. Like, this is just a top tier, top tier combo right here. That's him with more realistic eyes, but I don't, know, I don't use these eyes that he's got very often nowadays. I just think they're a little bit intense. That, that's not purple enough though. That's more like a cane, isn't it? That would be quite purple. That's pretty purple. Oh, I love those ones. Maybe something like that. I don't know. He took a while to age up, but it's just because, I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day. Oh my, he looks great with brown eyes. I can't stop putting eyes on him, guys, help. There, he just needs a bit of muscle growth. Like, oh my gosh, he has his butt. <laughs> he's not there yet, though. Right now, he's like very underfed. Joseph, what are you doing? I kind of feel like he suits this sort of dress style. Like a little bit e-boy for now. I'm not saying he'll stay there forever, but like for the moment, he just, I don't know, he's got this vibe to him. Like he's, this is his like teen phase. There you go, guys. E-boy Alonzo. So, I didn't know he was going this way. I actually thought he'd be really fashion. Uh, but he just sort of ended up this way and you know what? I'm not complaining because I actually think I think it looks pretty good but Let me know what you think of him in the comments below I think I have to try and think of a way to get at least him and Alice and potentially him Alice and Zoe I wanted to do university with them But honestly after doing just one person in university, which is Pam and knowing how hard that was I really don't know how how I can possibly do it with three people. I think it would be too hard. We could always have one of the main and the other two roommates. We could do things that way instead. Let me know what you think in the comments below. It gave him the natural gamer and the heavy drinker. Heavy drinker traits. Might change those. There we go. K uh, Alonzo, not Kane. Was I calling him Kane? <laughs> he does look kind of similar. And time to take a little sip of your tea, guys, because we are on to my final little sip of Sims tea for today. Um, for that, we have to go over to Glimmerbrook because this is all about Nanami's secret heritage. <laughs> This is actually something that was meant to be included in uh, my Realm of Magic series, but unfortunately I never just quite got round to it. There was meant to be an episode that would be set in Japan while Nanami was away, so we could kind of see what she was up to and see things from her point of view. But I'm very much dictated by how interested people are in a series, what my views are getting, and if I feel like the interest is waning, I have to like cut things short or change the way I want to do things a little bit. And this was definitely one of those decisions that was made by 
uh, people's interest in the Realm of Magic series. So the offshoot series in Japan was meant to kind of go into Nanami. Obviously she went home to uh, go to her father's funeral, kind of see her family and the after effects of her father dying. And spend a little bit of time with her mom, who we know is pretty controlling, and also with her brother, Seiji. So I actually did build like a whole mini Japan set ready to film this. You saw a little bit of that um, when I used it in like a clip just to introduce part of the series. I think there was like an intro where you saw her in the big um, Okawe family home in Tokyo with her parents. Well, with her mother and with Seiji. Because there was a storyline that I had planned for Nanomi, but I just never really quite got the time to do. So as you guys know, there is a huge age gap between Nanami and her brother Seiji. Seiji is a lot older than her and it was kind of explained as maybe a bit of an oops baby, uh, baby between Seiji and Nanami's parents, but even then the age gap was pretty significant. Things didn't really add up age-wise. Now it's actually not something I originally thought about when I introduced Nanami's character, but it's actually a suggestion that uh, the guys on the Discord, those of you watching, you were chit-chatting about this and we kind of came up with a little bit of a plan and I liked it so much. I liked your ideas on this so much that I'm like, we have to introduce this to the series. So again, there's a few little light hints about this, but very easy to miss if you didn't really know what was going on. But what I had originally planned for in our Tokyo episode was that Nanami would go back uh, see her father basically uh, on his deathbed. Obviously he died a little bit too soon for that. And on his deathbed, he would let her in on the biggest secret of her whole life. And that secret would be that Nanami's parents weren't actually the parents she thought they were. Her parents are actually her grandparents and she's actually Seiji's daughter. Seiji basically obviously rises into fame, his parents are very rich and wealthy, definitely not wanting a secret baby to get out and I know that in eastern countries this can be like the public can think of this even more negatively than they do in uh, western countries so it kind of made a great deal of sense and I was pretty excited to give it a go. However, I just didn't get quite time to do it, but I am still calling it canon. Basically, Seiji is actually Nami's father and not her brother. And if we ever do anything with these guys again, I really wanted there to be a fallout with that. We know that Nami is actually quite a volatile sim. I don't know if she would take that well. I think she would definitely need a little bit of help uh, from her friends and particularly from Nita. I thought that would be a really way to help bring them closer together. And that's where the romance would kind of blossom in them helping each other through this, uh, or at least Nita helping Nami through this. I still kind of would quite like to do a series with those two guys. And I also think it ties in pretty realistically with the way that Seiji treats uh, Nami, which is he's always been almost an overly caring big brother. Because obviously he knew the truth and he was basically acting as kind of an intermediary fa father without ever actually being able to tell her that. So if you guys want uh, me to kind of do a Nita and Nami series where we explore those feelings and emotions a little bit, let me know in the comments below. And that kind of brings me to the end of my Sims T series for this episode. There's probably a few secrets out there that I still have so we could do a future episode as well. If you guys enjoyed this, please give it a big cheeky thumbs up. If you want to see another one, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.